Yeah. I mean, I, I'm 48 years old, I, and, and, and Live and Good there is around my age, and we both grew up without any guns in schools, and, and we didn't have any to worry about any of that stuff. I, I mean, there was duck and cover drills, but that was different. That was an existential threat. This is, you know, this is a real threat that happens, and I, I think it's insane. My kids did not grow up learning uh, active shooter drills in school. Your kids are, and that's frightening. That's it is very frightening. I remember the first time I saw um, the footage from Columbine. I was in ninth grade, and that's something that I will never forget. Yeah. And um, after seeing that, and of course after 9-11, you kind of uh, become very anxious and traumatized in big crowds because you don't know where the shooter is going to be, if there is going to be one, if there's going to be something going off in a crowd. So I would get anxious, and I, I would see that on TV, and then I would become anxious in real life. So now I'm 32 years old. My kids are going to school. Before they start the school year, I have to tell them about what to do during a tornado, during a hurricane, right. during um, a chemical release, because this, my children's school is a mile away from an oil refinery, and what to do. But never did I think I would be teaching my children how to duck and cover right. for an active shooter. Never did I have to think about that. And that's something that we shouldn't have to think about because the schools are designed, you know, to go to, to learn and be safe and have fun. It's not to duck and cover and worry about bullying or worried about pushing someone to the edge where they're going to come in with a gun and start shooting the most vulnerable children. Yeah. It's the, yeah. I, the, the whole concept of having the whole idea of having a fence around a school for me is just abhorrent. I didn't grow up with fences around schools. And today we have to guard them like prisons. And that just blows my mind that we've lost yeah, the basic exactly sense of human decency in this country that we can't leave our children alone. And it, it, it blows my or mind. Or you can't let them play outside until the, until the street lights come on because I can't let them do that either, especially now. Especially running this race because you never know what might happen right. with the, the kind of race I'm running. I'm, I'm a threat to the establishment. They might do anything to get me to stop running. God only knows what they might think of. And I obviously do not want to put it out there for them to, to try to do that. You're very courageous so I've, to run in general. Um, as a person of color, to run, um, I would be frightened to death if I were not a privileged old white guy. I'll be honest. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Well, I'm, like I said before, I'm taking a huge risk running because this we have nothing left to lose except our lives. Right. And if we don't run and, and take... Um, the government back for the people, then we're going to keep on losing our lives. And that's what it is right now. We are literally losing our lives in multiple forms. It's it's always through poverty, income inequality, health care. And as I put in a tweet out earlier today, this morning, um, big oil and poverty go hand in hand because it, it's a never ending cycle. Yep. It's a never ending cycle because we I live in an area where we're we're already in poverty. We have oil refineries 12 miles long on the side of 225 it's crazy. in uh, Pasadena, Texas. And those oil refineries are put in areas that are majority people of color, low income people. Education level is also not the most, not the best. And on top of that, it affects our education for our children. It affects our environment for our children. And it affects our health care for us and our children and future generations. And it's always going to continue to do that. And then on top of that, we have people in Congress and in the Senate who are approving these these outrageous military spending budgets and allocating it into, of course, more war and destabilization for what? For more oil. Yes. So yes. It's all tied together. It's all tied together. And at some point, we're going to have to evaluate what is most important. Is it oil or is it our lives? And, of course, water is life, and we know that it is. Water is a precious commodity in places like Cape Town, Africa. It's a precious commodity in places that there has been, um, you know, oil leaks. Heck, in, in um, North Dakota, they're putting that huge pipeline underneath the Missouri River. When it leaks, what's going to happen? We're not going to have that water for 18 million people downstream. Yeah. People are going to be affected greatly. So I, I look at it as a, as a bigger symptom, as as literally running 
for our lives, to save ourselves. Something that uh, Ted Cruz and Beto O'Rourke will never do. They will never go up against big oil and they will never go up against the military industrial complex. They will also never go up against the health insurance industry. That's something that I'm willing to do because I'm sticking our lives, or, or my neck out for our lives. I'm doing this for all of us because I have nothing to gain from this in reality. Someone had mentioned on Facebook, whomever told you to run for Senate was exploiting you. And I am happy to report that I haven't made any millions of dollars off of this race. I'm barely scraping by as it is. No, no big cat, fat stacks coming in. Uh, no D triple C money. Uh, to run. Nothing like that. Okay. Nothing like that. We are raising money slowly and surely through CrowdPack and people here and there will donate a few bucks. They will donate their time. They will go out and block walk and phone bank. But unfortunately, I can't even raise enough money to get the list from the Democratic Party. Right. What do they want to charge you for access to the van? About uh, anywhere between fifteen to two thousand hmm. hmm. well, dollars. It costs five thousand dollars to get on the ballot. Five thousand dollars. It costs. Yes. And did it you manage to, did a lot you get more on money the ballot? To I mean, you, you did that. I mean, you got it. You raised the five grand, right? So. Yes, we raised the five grand. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, this is yes. a quick shout out to everybody. Uh, you, we've got the.